एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता योर मेंटर फॉर करंट अफेयर्स सो लेट्स क्विकली बिगिन करंट अफेयर्स वीडियो ऑफ टुडे बट बिफोर दैट लेट मी रिमाइंड यू दैट वी हैव अ लाइव कोर्स फॉर द आर बी एस एबीएन अवार्ड एग्जामिनेशन एंड आर मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन इज हियर टू हेल्प यू इन ऑल वेज सो यू कैन डाउनलोड द एप्लीकेशन टू गेट योर हैंड्स ऑन द डेली जी के एंड एग्जाम अपडेट्स यू हैव पास ईयर्स ऑन दिस एप्लीकेशन इज वेल एंड मेनी मोर थिंग्स ओके so download this application from the google play store this is our mobile number this is the website and the email id in case you feel the need of any kind of guidance you can contact us through these channels apart from this we have discussions.anujindal.in forum as well which you can use to put your queries out okay so let's begin with the because the information part is over now so as per a newspaper article published in january 2023 India has collaborated with Dash to establish a new working group to build supply chains and boost bilateral trade. So, which country can it be? So, here the right answer is US. Okay. So, with US, India has established this new working group, which is going to work on developing the sustainable supply chains. Okay. Now, here we need to take a pause of one second and look in the past. so in the past what happened we had the covid pandemic and after that pandemic after the global lockdowns the supply chains were disrupted and because of that india took this initiative to develop the supply chain resilience initiative along with japan and australia so right now india has a supply chain resilience initiative with australia and japan and now we have a new working group separate working group of india and us so in this way India has connected with all the quad member countries to develop the sustainable supply chains across their markets okay across various segments okay so this is how india is trying to strategize its supply chain and boost its economy so that was about news now let's move to question number 2 which state has collaborated with indian army for the soul of steel challenge so here uttarakhand guys is the right answer now what is this soul of challenge this is guys basically a triathlon okay in which the indian army members run and this triathlon is held in europe every year and indian army personnel take participate in this challenge so this is all this is uh, enough for your exam preparation okay as far as this soul of steel challenge is concerned now there is much more to it and we are going to look into that so the very first thing is that indian army and uttarakhand has signed an mou for the clo global okay for conducting the first edition of the soul of steel challenge okay so here with aayega okay an mou with the clo global now clo global is basically an initiative which was established back in the year 2019 and the basic idea of this clo global global is to conduct this soul of steel challenge trial thing okay so defense minister rajnath singh inaugurated the soul of steel challenge which is nothing but the uh, triathlon for the army personnel now here the triathlon was uh, i can say inaugurated by rajnath singh on a very special day and that day was the armed forces veterans day on january 14 so here guys before moving ahead i would like to ask you the reason because of which we celebrate the armed forces veterans day can any one of you tell me why does india celebrate the armed forces veterans day so this is your first question of the day now it is the long distance triathlon held in europe and india participates in it okay so here people between the age group of 18 to 30 are allowed to participate and as many as 12 indians will be shortlisted for the challenge and it will be divided the participants will be divided into two teams of 6 each now one more last information regarding this news is about the clo global okay so clo global was set up in 2019 uh by the major vivek jacob who is a retired para special forces officer and the purpose of it is to enable the life skill training and youth development okay so that's the basic idea and it is also going to give an opportunity to the uttarakhand state to develop its tourism as well okay because this challenge is going to be 
conducted there. Now the next question is which country has announced its plan to establish a global south center of excellence to undertake the research on development solutions for the developing countries. So here guys, it is a very proud moment to announce that it is none other, other than our own nation. India has taken this burden on its shoulder to establish this global south center of excellence which is going to work for the technological and innovative solutions to help the developing nations okay if you are a little bit aware about the south south cooperation then you would mm -hmm. definitely on the right path of your preparation okay because this is definitely hinting at the south south cooperation what is the south south cooperation if in case you are not aware of it so let me inform you that south south cooperation is basically the grouping of <laughs> the countries in the global south. Now, this global south is characterized or defined by the equator. This is defined by the development. Okay. So, here you can clearly see the countries like China, Brazil, South Africa, and all these countries come under the global south. So, the south south cooperation emphasizes on the collaboration between the south. Uh, global south countries for the development of each other okay so for taking this development a step ahead india has announced to establish this global center of excellence for the south development okay now the second point of importance here is that this announcement was made at a summit and that summit is voice of the global south and guys this is a virtual summit hosted by india itself okay so this is again an important initiative india has g20 presidency b20 that is business 20 forum of g20 india has this uh, uh india has hosted this voice of the global so so south summit india is establishing the global south center of excellence so here this is again a very big milestone for the foreign policy of india and the global positioning of india okay Next question is, which company has developed India's first 5G enabled drone named Skyhawk that is capable of vertical takeoff and landing? So here guys, IG drones is the right answer. Option A is the right answer. Okay. Now first I'm going to tell you the news itself. Then I will tell you the basics behind the news so that you can remember the news and retain it for a longer period of time. So first of all, news is that this IG drones, which is a startup, it has developed India's first 5G enabled drone. Okay. Now this drone is capable of vertical takeoff and landing. And this drone can be used for providing the services in the defense sect uh, sector and the medical sector. Okay. For example, supplying the medicines to the remote and hilly areas where the physical transportation is not available. So this drone can be used to supply the medicines and emergency aid in those remote areas. Okay. Then the next point here is that IG drones is incubated by the V. Surendra Sai University of Technology of Odisha. Okay. And it is located in the Sambalpur, Sambalpur district of Odisha. So that is the news. These are the facts that you need to remember. Now, what is the concept of vertical takeoff and landing? You must have heard about this similar concept regarding the aircrafts as well, because India is also trying to, especially in the military field, in the armed forces, India is trying to have more and more planes which can vertically take off and land. So, use of it. Why do we have so much noise around this vertical takeoff and landing? The reason is that the vertical takeoff and landing of the plane happens like this. For example, this is the land. This is the plane. Okay. So the plane takes off like this. So this is the vertical takeoff and lands like this. So this is the vertical landing. Usually what happens, the plane runs and it takes the, uh, it takes the path of runway to uh, get itself in position and then it shoots up like this. Okay. So this is the normal takeoff. And this is the vertical takeoff. What's the use of this vertical takeoff? The basic idea here is that we do not require the runway for it. And this minimizes the land requirement. This also helps in the, in the 
strategic areas okay for example in the hilly areas where the runway is not sufficiently available so there also these vertical takeoff planes can provide the help and also aid in the armed forces it provide aids to the indian air force okay now here remember we are talking about the drone okay drones also need the run a little bit of runway to take off okay and now this drone is capable of taking off vertically okay so that's the basic idea of this vertical takeoff and landing of this drone now remember that it is a 5g enabled drone which is the first of its kind in india so here ig drones company is important because it has developed this drone and the which has incubated the ig drones is also important because this is india's first 5g enabled drone which can vertically take off and land as well okay so remember ig drones and its incubator as well okay which is the veer surendra sai university of technology in odisha that much is enough if you are not able to remember the sambalpur district you can definitely leave it out but the university and its place odisha is important so this much you need to remember okay my next question is where will india's first center of excellence in online gaming be established to help startups from the northeastern region to build next generation online gaming apps and softwares so here guys shillong is the right answer so first let's locate shillong on the map so here is shillong meghalaya so meghalaya touches its border with bangladesh with assam largely okay and we definitely hear about the border clashes between assam and meghalaya very often okay so that is also an issue associated with both of these states which you should be aware of now coming to the news itself so the news is that india's first center of excellence in the online gaming now remember it is india's first not the india's or the northeast first okay it is the complete nation's first online gaming center of excellence which will be established in shillong however the focus of this center will be definitely on the northeastern region because we see that the northeastern region is not that developed so we need to give a push push to the northeastern region from all the spheres okay be it the online gaming be it the startup system be it the education be it the business ecosystem so every uh, sphere of development needs a push from the center and this is a form of the push that is being given okay so this will be established through the software technology parks of india which is a very prestigious organization under the digital india startup hub okay uh this is the organization which is going to help in developing this center of excellence in online game okay now online gaming industry will reach 5 billion dollars in 2025 okay so this is a huge uh i can say huge market for the online gaming and a huge potential lies in this sector only and if we are able to tap the potential then definitely it can help us in achieving the 5 trillion economy dream as well the ministry has also announced the ministry of electronics and it has also announced to set up a state of the art national institute of electronics and it which is in short form called as nilit so this will be established to provide the digital skills to the youth of the northeast india and it is also going to be established at shillong okay so these two initiatives will be established in shillong only now guys we are talking about the online gaming industry i hope you are a little bit aware of the current affairs and you are keeping a track of the current affairs and if you are doing so then you must be remembering of the national uh, mission national avgc mission which was announced last last year bhi keh sakte hain aur last month bhi keh sakte hain in december only the avgc task force of india the uh, aviation sorry animation visual effects gaming and comics this is the full form avgc and indian government has established the avgc task force back in the year 2022 and the task force submitted its uh you can say recommendation or it called for the national avgc extended reality mission last month only so if you are aware of it then do tell me what is the outlay of that mission 
and if you are not aware of it then this is your lacking guys you need to prepare it because in spotlight also i have provided the news related to that mission okay so search it out find it out and read about it and in case you are not understanding any point i am here to help you out you can provide the uh, provide the question in the comment section or on the discussions forum as well okay Question number six is where was the two day long think so here guys guys is the right answer okay so it was held in Bhopal. Okay, so Think20 meeting is again a part of the G20 meetings that are conducted by India. So I already told you to prepare a list of the G20 meetings which India is going to host in this year because the, there are going to be many, many meetings of the G20 like this Think20, we have the uh, B20 forum as well. So many meetings are going to be held in India. So Think 20 meeting was held to topics like global governance with life, values and well-being. And remember, this life is not life. This is the life for environment campaign which Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched. Okay, so that we can imbibe the sustainable habits to uh, in our lifestyles to make our environment more sustainable. Okay. So that is all about this Think20 meeting and this is just an addition to the meeting concept only that what was discussed there, okay? So the first infrastructure group meeting will be held in Pune under the 20 uh, presidency to focus on the other facets of the, uh, other facets of making cities economic centers of growth, financing urban infrastructure and making it future ready in all aspects. The infrastructure working groups meeting was uh, will be held on the theme of financing cities of tomorrow, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. So this will be the focus of the infrastructure working grouping uh, groups meeting. Okay. Next question is which of the follow following is the first district ever in India for on ground implementation of groundbreaking five G use cases proposed by the staff. So here, guys, Vidisha is the right answer. So Vidisha is a district in Madhya Pradesh and it has, uh, you can say it is the first district to implement the 5G technology. Okay. So uh, this technology, this use case was proposed by the startups and Vidisha has implemented. Next question is Sahash is the special education program of which state? So here, Tripura is the right answer. Now, special education or social education uh, program is basically uh, it works on the development of the child in every aspect be it the economical aspect not the economical emotional aspect or the academic aspect okay so tripura government has launched this special education program called sahars to encourage the social and emotional learning of the students <coughs> sahars was launched in august 2022 in 40 schools on a pilot basis and right now the announcement is that this initiative will be spread across all the schools in the state of Tripura so that the children can be empowered to learn the happiness and contribute to empathetic development okay so this initiative aims to develop the empathetic aptitude of the children so from january 2023 onwards it will be expanded across all the schools and uh, it basically focuses on the social and emotional learning of children and uh, the basic areas of focus in the social and emotional learning are basically management of emotions positivity positive goals feelings and showing empathy for others establishing the positive relationships making responsible decisions so this is in a way going to help the children in developing the qualitative aspect okay in academics or in school education we tend to focus on the quantitative quantitative aspect like the marks okay the performance of the child which is again uh, enumerated in the terms of numbers or the grades now here what we are seeing we are seeing the qualitative development of 
a child the emotional development of a child so that the child becomes a rational being in the society once he or she gets out of the school okay and this is very much in line with the national education policy of 2020 as well implemented the first ever policy for blindness control in the country to ensure the right to sight so here rajasthan guys is the right answer so it is the first of its kind policy right to sight okay so the policy is in line with the nirogi rajasthan vision of the current government so this is the campaign which was launched in 2019 and the purpose of it is to make the state uh, disease free next question is where is the indian coast guard ship kamla devi commissioned so here guys kolkata is the right answer so it is the kamla devi ship and it will it has been given to the indian coast guard okay so do remember this fact as well then garden research ship builders and engineers have developed this ship so this is basically grse company which is based in kolkata itself and it has developed this ship for the indian coast guard now here my question from you is you need to tell me the director general of the icg as well as the motto of icg okay what is the tagline of the indian coast guard or the motto in general okay now guys it is a fast patrol vessel so basically this ship is going to be used for the patrolling purposes okay and not for any kind of war or you can say strategic purpose will not be served by this particular ship it is only going to uh do the surveillance work in our exclusive economic zone that much of it. okay now it has been named after kamla devi so who is kamla devi let's know about this charismatic woman so kamla devi chatopadhyay was basically a freedom fighter and a social reformer as well who lived from 1903 to 1988 okay she is the first lady in india to stand in elections from madras constituency constituency and uh, although she lost in the elections but uh, neglect or diminish the fact that she was the first lady to fight an election in india okay so do remember this fact about her she was also the driving force behind the renaissance in the handicrafts hand looms and theaters in independent india so this is the significant role played by the kamla devi chatopadhyay and because of this role, the uh, ship is named after the kamla devi chatopadhyay The next question is with which country has India signed an MOU for the green hydrogen development in the in January 2023 So A is the right answer So we are both going to develop the green hydrogen okay so how are they going to develop first of all they are going to develop the technology so that the green hydrogen can be extracted efficiently okay with the minimum cost So both of these countries are also going to underlay a uh, an undersea cable that will connect India to the UAE for the One Sun One World One Grid initiative. Okay, also what this initiative is basically to share the sun uh, solar power across the tropical countries. Okay, so this also what is the vision of the International Solar Alliance. I hope you have heard about it. The basic idea of this is to share the solar power. across the countries by a single grid so that is the basic idea of this one sun one world one grid initiative and under this initiative an undersea cable has been developed uh, the undersea cable has been laid so that the solar power can be shared between india and ua that's a basic idea okay now little more about the green hydrogen so hydrogen we all know is extracted from water it is also extracted from coal and there are many sources through which hydrogen is being extracted by india under the national hydrogen mission now this green hydro basically the hydrogen that is extracted by using the renewable energy okay the very big source of hydrogen is water and 
an electrolysis process is done on water to separate hydrogen and oxygen and that electrolysis process needs electricity which is uh, used from the renewable energy if for example solar power is used for the electrolysis process and then we are de deriving the hydrogen out of it so this entire process and the hydrogen that we have now is the green hydrogen okay so that's the basic difference between a sem sim uh, between a brown black or gray hydrogen or a green hydrogen all the other forms of hydrogen blue hydrogen gray hydrogen brown or black hydrogen which is the same hydrogen all of these emit some kind of carbon dioxide or some kind of harmful substance in the atmosphere whereas this green hydrogen is completely sustainable and eco-friendly okay that is why the government is focusing a lot on developing the green hydrogen okay the next question is recently india has announced to eliminate the lymphatic filariasis by 2027 three years ahead of the global target through the mission board and we have made this announcement during the national symposium on india's roadmap to eliminate the disease okay this roadmap outlines a dash approach so it is a five pronged approach okay so First of all, what is lymphatic filariasis? Lymphatic filariasis is also known as elephantiasis. Okay, you must have heard about this elephantiasis uh, disease, and it is basically this disease where one limb uh, or more than one limb of a human's body gets swollen like this. Okay, and it happens because of a parasite which is transmitted through mosquitoes. Okay, so India unfortunately shares a significant burden of this lymphatic filariasis and therefore Indian government has decided to remove this disease by 2027, three years ahead of the global target of 2030. Okay, now let's dig a little deeper into the news. So uh, Uttar Pradesh, Odisha, Telangana, Bihar account for about 60% of this disease, okay, disease cases. Elimination of this disease will be done through a five-prong approach. So let's quickly jump on that approach. First step in this approach would be the multi-drug administration campaign. So basically the campaigns will be held under which the drugs will be administered to the patients. Early diagnosis and treatment, engagement of medical colleges for strengthening morbidity management and disability services. Okay. So I hope it is again not very difficult to uh, understand the basic. Uh, idea of the second step is to early diagnose and provide the treatment and how are they going to do that they are going to deploy the college staff the medical college staff to diagnose and provide the treatment integrated vector control with multi-sectoral coordinated efforts okay so vector control initiative is basically to uh, control the mosquitoes okay so that they won't spread the disease further then intersectoral convergence with allied departments and ministries so that an integrated approach can be done and uh, we can um, attain the uh, objective of elimination of this disease. Leveraging existing digital platforms for the disease and exploring the alternate diagnostics. Okay, so these are the five uh, steps or the approaches that the government is planning to take to eliminate lymphatic filariasis by 2027 okay so here guys i would like to give a little homework for all of you and that homework is that you need to find out the targets of india regarding specific diseases for example malaria elimination target is there tb elimination target is there we have the targets related to many diseases so can targets in this decade okay which indian government is trying to achieve so lymphatic filariasis is also known as elephantiasis and it is a neglected tropical disease so basically in the tropical areas it is found and infection occurs because the filarial parasite is transmitted by mosquito from a human to another among the humans the mosquito transmit this infection and this infection is usually acquired in childhood causing hidden damage to the lymphatic system and because of this limbs are the most affected uh, region and many people lose their ability to use their limbs for example they have difficulty in walking they have difficulty in 
यूजिंग देयर हैंड्स ओके सो लिम्स सबसे ज्यादा अफेक्ट होते हैं इसमें ओके सो दिस डिजीज कॉजेज ए सिम्टोमेटिक अक्यूट एंड क्रॉनिक कंडीशन एंड एज ऑफ मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू एट सिक्सटी थ्री मिलियन पीपल इन फोर्टी सेवन कंट्रीज वर्ल्ड वाइड रिमेन थ्रेटेंड बाई लिम्फेटिक फेलरिस एंड रिक्वायर प्रिवेंटिव कीमोथेरेपी टू स्प्रॉ to stop the spread of this parasitic infection because if this is not stopped they can lose their ability to walk they can lose their ability to uh, use their body parts okay so this guys is a very huge number 863 million people are affected by this disease this disease basically and our 3 billion euro contract to supply and service freight trains in india largest ever order so here siemens is the right answer now this siemens is the german engineering company it is going to provide the electric locomotives and uh, the servicing of those locomotives to the indian government okay so here 1200 locomotives and remember these are the electric electric locomotives which will be given to india by this german company okay so these are going to be the freight trains which will carry the goods from one place to another place for the purpose of their consumption or for the purpose of further manufacture now guys i hope you have heard about the freight corridors which india is developing we have been developing two defense industrial corridors one in uttar pradesh another one is tamil nadu and we are developing the freight corridors across various states so my question for you is you need to tell me that how many freight corridors are being developed by the government of india okay next question is government e marketplace launched womania on gem initiative to empower women entrepreneurs and uh, women self help groups to sell their products directly to various government ministries departments and initiate institutions The initiative is represented by the artwork Magal, an illustration of women empowerment and grace by Dash. So here, Anupta M. Ghosh is the right answer. Okay. So from this question itself, you can yourself see the depth of questions that can be asked in the RBI examination. Okay. So prepare yourself for such type of deep questions. Okay. Government the e-marketplace has launched the Womania on Gem initiative. in so that the women entrepreneurs can sell their products directly to the government ministries okay i hope you remember that gem is a portal through which the government ministries departments and the government related psus procure their goods from the msmes and startups now the women uh, oriented or the women owned entrepreneurs uh, sorry women owned enterprises will also be given this chance to supply the goods okay so under this women in womania on gem initiative the uh, focus will be to procure more and go more goods from the women led enterprises okay so here it is going to fulfill the objective of gender equality which is also a sustainable development goal okay the fifth goal of the sdg aims to achieve the gender equality the initiative is represented by the anukta m ghosh artwork that is magan okay uh, and the ceo of gem is s radha chauhan remember the name of the gem ceo the next question is which country has launched the world's first agri focused satellite so it is south africa okay so this first agri focused satellite has been launched by the south african government and it will help the south african nation to south africa to generate 100 million dollars in revenue for the south african government okay so this satellite is named sat1 and it has been launched uh on the dragon fly dragon fly aerospace okay on a spacex uh, falcon 9 rocket with this world's first agri satellite many first star attached so the first first is that it is the first ever commercial satellite licensed in south africa it is the first micro satellite to be manufactured in south africa since 2009 it is the first satellite which is the earth observation satellite okay 
and it is the part of the EOS satellite constellation of the South African government and the first agri focus constellation in space okay so it is also a part of the first agri focus constellation in space next question is which bank of russia has launched the direct payments in rupees to boost the bilateral trade and investments in january 2023 so here vtb bank is the right answer and remember this vtb24 and vtb these are two different banks so Russian bank VTB, which is the second largest bank in Russia, has launched the direct payment in rupees to boost the bilateral trade and investment. So basically, under this mechanism, the direct settlements uh, will be done. And the mechanism of direct settlement allows to fix the price of a product and the payment in the national currency and to receive the individual quotes on market terms. Okay. So basically, the prices will be set in Indian currency and the, uh, basically the price will be set and payment will be done in Indian currency only. Okay. Also establish their Vostro accounts to trade with Russia and obviously without a Vostro account, this cannot happen. Okay. So what is a Vostro account? Vostro account is basically an account which is opened in Indian bank only, but this, this account is owned by Russia. Okay okay so in this account what happens a dealer who has uh let's say who has uh, imported goods from uh not imported exported goods to india okay to an indian dealer this indian dealer will submit will pay the amount in exchange of this good in indian currency to the uh, account of the russian bank in india now, this amount will be utilized by the Russian bank to settle the payment for the imports they make from India. Okay, so this is how the Vostro and Nostro accounts are used. Vostro is your account and Nostro is our account. So, this specific account which is opened in India is a Vostro account for India but a Nostro account for Russia. Okay, so these are basically the terminologies and I hope you are acquainted with these terminologies because these are very basic terms related to your finance. Okay. So, if you are not aware of it, I hope now you have got an idea of it. Okay. Next question is recently the first ever district good governance index has been released by the Union Home Minister Amit Shah in Jammu. Which of the following statement or statements is are is are not true about the index? First statement is the index has been prepared by the Jammu Kashmir administration in collaboration with the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances and Ladakh administration. This index is based on 10 governance sectors, 80 indicators and 139 data points. Third statement is this index has been topped by Jammu district which is followed by Doda, Samba, Pulwama and Srinagar. So here guys, option C is the right answer. Basically, of statement first and statement second, both of these statements are wrong statements. And only the statement three is the right statement. And the question is asking us which is not true. So the not true statements are one and second. Okay. Now let's discuss why are these statements not true. So first of all, Jammu Kashmir administration has collaborated with the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances. Yes, but not with the Ladakh administration. Ladakh administration was not a part of this district good governance index. Second point is that yes, 10 governance sectors are there in this index, but not 80 indicators and 139 data points to bilkul bhi nahi. Okay. So again, this statement is incorrect. The third statement is correct because Jammu Kashmir is at the, sorry, Jammu district is at the top and we have the other districts that is Doda, Samba, Pulwama and Srinagar following the footsteps of Jammu. Okay. Now let's discuss this index in detail. So, Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances and Jammu Kashmir government collaborated to develop this index. There are 22 districts of Jammu and Kashmir which were assessed in this index. And remember, we have a good governance index at the national level, which assesses the governance mechanism of the states and union territories. And this district good governance index is copied or you can say is made on the very same structure of the good governance index which we have at the national level okay 
So all the 22 districts of the Jammu Kashmir were assessed in this index, which is the first ever district good governance index. And Jammu Kashmir administration is the first of its kind of administration which has developed this index. Okay. Jammu district is at the top. And apart from this, uh, in my opinion, all the other districts would not be asked in the examination as such. But to be on a safer side, uh, at least remember these four districts because all these make the top five districts of this good governance in index, district good governance index. So top five districts yaad rakh lo. Iske lawa aur kuch yaad rakhne ko main nahi kahungi. There is one more thing that is parameters. Wo to yaad rakhne hi padenge. So 10 governance sectors, 58 indicators, 116 data points. Now remember, these 10 governance sectors are directly taken from the good governance index of the national uh, of the national level. So here we have agriculture and allied sector, commerce and industry, human resource development, public health, and so and so. So what does it mean? It means that the state's performance at the national level and at the sub uh, you can say sub national level in at the district level. So the district's performance in these particular areas that is judged in the district good governance index okay how efficiently the administration of a district is working to cater to the problems of these sectors that is assessed in this district good governance index okay so yes you need to remember all the 10 parameters or the governance sector of this good governance index because i to already told you that all these are taken directly from the good governance index which we have at the national level so clearly these are important okay although in my opinion if you want you can skip the number of indicators which are there in each sector for example agriculture has 11 indicators commerce and industry has five indicators so this number you can skip but the parameters clearly not don't skip Okay, moving to the next question. Aditya Birla Health Insurance Company Limited has signed a bank insurance partnership with Punjab and Sindh Bank for distribution of health insurance products through the bank's network of branches across India. Aditya Birla Health Insurance is a joint venture between the Aditya Birla Group and MMI Holdings since August 2015. Which country does the MMI Holdings belong to? So, this is a very difficult question, in my opinion. And yes, you can encounter such questions in your RBI SEBI and award examination and in my opinion if you encounter such a question especially in RBI examination because such type of questions are usually asked in RBI exam because in RBI we have 80 questions of GA only and RBI's level is a little higher than SEBI and NABAR so it tends to go into too much depth okay so you can expect such a question in RBI examination so in my opinion, when you encounter such a question and you are not aware of the answer, then you should skip it. Because remember, you have negative marking in the examination and you do not want, you do not have to score 100% marks in G. Okay, it is not going to help you in any way out. You have the sectional cutoff, you have the overall cutoff. So just try to meet the cutoff and also try to meet the overall cutoff. That will come out in the phase one exam. Okay, from that perspective, this is a very difficult question. In case you haven't read about it, you can clearly skip. Now, obviously, I'm teaching you this question. So there would not be any need to skip this particular question. So let's begin the question itself. Let's discuss the news itself. So guys, South Africa is the country where this MMI holding is located. Okay. And uh, the news is a very simple bank assurance partnership. Bank Assurance, I hope all of you are aware. Bank Assurance and Corporate Agency Agreement, both of uh, them are the bank and the insurance companies collaborate and the banks sell the insurance products of the insurance company to its customers. Okay. Mayank Batwal is the CEO of Aditya Birla Health Insurance and it is a joint venture between Aditya Birla and MMI Holdings. Next question is, now remember guys, this is a very, very important question. So do listen to me very carefully. Okay. Recently, RBI has proposed a framework for adoption of an expected loss-based approach for provisioning of banks in India. 
As per the framework, the banks are required to classify their financial assets, primary loans, including irrevocable loans, commitments, and investments classified as held to maturity or available for sale into one of the dash categories, depending upon the assessed credit losses on them at the time of initial recognition as well as on each subsequent reporting date and make necessary provisions. So here, how many categories are there? So here, guys, the right answer is three. Okay, I hope uh, you have understood the question and in case you haven't understood it, so don't worry. I'm here to tell you what the news is, what the question is. So basically, the news is that a new framework has been released by RBI and this framework particularly talks about the provisioning by the banks in case of uh, losses they incur. Okay, so here we have the expected loss-based approach, loss-based framework for the provisioning by the banks. And I hope you are aware why do the banks keep provision so that they uh, would not uh, face a windfall loss. Okay, like we have the windfall gain, which comes out of the blue. We have the windfall loss as well, which comes out of the blue, uh, about which the bank has no clue, right? Or which the bank did not expect. So the provisioning is a case okay suppose if the bad debt happens so we have a cushion to rely ourselves on so expected loss based approach on which from now onwards the bank will make the uh, provisions okay and one thing this framework has not been adopted as of now it will be adopted one year after the final guidelines and these are not the final guidelines okay this is the proposed framework now, what does the proposed framework say? So prior to this framework, we had the incurred loss-based approach and now we have the expected loss-based ap approach. Okay, in loss-based approach, what did the banks do? They used to create the provisions on the basis of the losses that they have incurred in the past year. Okay, for example, in the previous year, if the bank has given 100 crore rupee loan in total and out of those 100 crore rupee, 10 crore is considered as bad debt okay they were the bad debts so the bank will create the provision of 10 crore this year also keeping in mind that last year we incurred this much loss so it is also expected that we would incur this much loss in this year only so that is the incurred loss based approach okay now in the expected loss based approach what will happen suppose the bank will at the time of initiation itself of the loan will assess the time the expected loss that they can have in the coming year and in case they expect that they can have more loss than they had incurred in the last year they would create more provision okay so that's the basic idea of it expected loss based approach from the name itself you can clearly assess the basic premise of this framework okay salient features first salient feature is that all the assets of the banks will be categorized into three categories, stage one, stage two, stage three. Now, I hope you are already uh, aware of this fact that whenever the bank classify any asset into an NPA, it also has three type of accounts for that. SMA, uh, special mention account zero, one, and two. Similarly, in this, again, have three categories, stage one, stage two, stage three, okay? Now here, remember, the NPA is a different thing and provisioning is a different thing. Okay, I'm just, creating an analogy between the two things so that you can understand the basic idea of this framework. Okay. So three categories will be created in this framework and uh, these categories will depend on the assessed credit losses on these categories. Okay. At the time of the initial recognition as well as on the subsequent reporting date and uh, the the provisions the regional rural banks and the small finance small cooperative banks will be out of this uh, framework as of now Time their own models they can also formulate their own formula for creating the expected loss okay for est estimating the expected loss the banks will be given an option to phase out the effect of increased provision on the CET1 capital over the maximum period of five years. Okay, that will be will also be given to the bank. So they can phase out, they can remove the effect 
of the increased provisioning. Obviously, if the expected loss-based provisioning is done, so it can happen that in a year the provisioning is made more than the previous year, and that the provisioning is made less in case of uh, in comparison to the previous year because we expect the losses to uh, minimize in this year. So this can also happen. But the effect of that on the CET one capital, which is a very crucial capital for the bank, will be removed over a period of five years. So five year time period will be given to the bank so that they can phase out the impact or reduce the impact or you can say write off the impact of this increase of provisions. Okay. The last question of the day is national awards were given to 82 best agripreneurs who were trained under the central sector scheme agri clinics and agri business of the government of india for their significant contribution to farmers through agri clinic and agri business service the ac and abc is a mega flagship scheme that aims to transform unemployed youth into self employed and agripreneurs through a 45 day free residential training at different parts of the country with a provision for availing loan and subsidy from banks which agency is the spearheading agency of this initiative. So obviously it is about the agriculture, which can be the implementing agency. It is none other than NABAT. So here guys, 82 uh, agribunners were given the awards, okay, under the agri clinic and agri business scheme. Now what is this scheme? So this is guys a scheme which basically aims to train the rural youth. Okay, again focusing on the rural youth. So these youth are given training uh, for creating the innovative products so that they can cater to the challenges of the agriculture in India. And at the same time, not only the subsidies and the availability is also ensured for these agripreneurs so that they can scale up their technology and they can use that technology on the farm as well. So that's the basic idea of this uh, AC and ABC scheme. And this scheme is being implemented by the National Institute of Agriculture Extension Management, also known as MANAGE, okay, through its nodal training institutes network. And NABAD is the spearheading agency of this mission, okay. So here guys, we have concluded the session of today. I hope you have enjoyed the session. In case you have any kind of issue in understanding any topic, you are free to ask it in the comment section. We have discussions forum as well where you can put your queries and we have the WhatsApp number as well where you can provide your feedback. Okay, so do provide your feedback, be it negative or positive. And that's all guys. I hope uh, we are done here. We are good at it. We are good. Uh, in completing the current affairs successfully. So thank you so much for watching the video of today. Have a good day.